Is good good enough when there is greatness within? Is good good enough when there is greatness within? John Love. Madam Toastmaster, fellow Toastmasters, welcome guests. <clears throat> what if somebody you knew owned a $10 million mansion but rarely stayed there? Electing to stay in a one bedroom apartment instead? Wouldn't you find that at least a little bit strange? Somebody could own a $10 million mansion and deny themselves the privilege and the satisfaction of living in a home like that. I do believe most people would find that strange. However, most people in their lifetime waste a $100 million human being, and precious few people find that strange. A $100 million human being. Am I suggesting or intimating that each of you is a $100 million person? Oh, absolutely. And if you think I'm being ridiculous, let's find out what you're worth, at least what you're worth where you sit tonight. What if someone rolled up to you in a wheelchair and offered you $5 million in exchange for those good legs of yours? Would you take that deal? I don't think so. That makes you worth $5 million. What if a blind man walked up to you and offered you $5 million in exchange for your good eyes? Would you take that deal? Nobody in the right mind would take that deal. Now you're worth $10 million. What if someone who was deaf were to walk up to me and offer me $10 million in exchange for my good hearing? Which would mean that I would never hear my wife's voice again. And folks, my wife's voice is music to my ears. She came to me a number of years ago, had this serious look on her face, and she said, Honey, do I talk too much? I took a deep breath. And I thought for a few seconds, and I said, Well, sweetheart, let me put it this way. Your voice is music to my ears. And frequently, you play me a symphony. <laughs> Do you think that I would take $10 million and never hear her voice again? Oh, absolutely not. And that makes me worth $10 million. And I know you wouldn't take that deal making you worth $10 million. That's a total of $20 million, at least $20 million, that you know that you're worth where you sit tonight. So what about that gap between the $20 million person that you know that you're worth and the $100 million person that you are capable of? Well, Jesse Rittenhouse says that you can fill that gap with your income. And old Jesse wouldn't lie about a thing like that. He said, I bargained with life for a penny, and life would pay no more. However, I begged an evening when I counted my scanty store. For life is just an employer who will pay you what you ask, and what you set the wages, you must bear the task. He said, I worked for a menial's hire, only to learn dismay that any wage I'd ask of life, life would have willingly paid. What Jesse Rittenhouse is telling me is that I am standing in a room full of giants. And his poem begs the question, is good good enough when there is greatness within? In order to fill that gap and go from where you are tonight to where you want to go, there are three things that you must do. Number one, you must have clear, concise, measurable goals, and they must be written down. In 1979, researchers went to Harvard University where they conducted a landmark study. They asked these soon-to-be graduated Harvard MBA students, do you have clear, concise, measurable goals? And have you written them down? They found that only 3% of the class had, had uh, clear, concise, measurable goals and had written them down. They found that 13% of the class had clear, concise, measurable goals but had not written them down, and they found that 84% had no goals at all. Ten years later, they came back to the group, and they found that the 13% who had clear, concise, measurable goals but had not written them down were earning, on average, double what the 84% did who had no goals. They found that the 3% who had clear, concise, measurable goals and had written them down were earning, on average, 10 times more than the rest of the class. In order to achieve great success, you must have clear, concise, measurable goals, and they must be written down. Number two, always be reading books and listening to CDs on achieving great success authored by successful men and women. A reporter spotted Neil Patel, the internet guru, on a busy street, and he yelled out, Hey, Neil! How do you get rich? Neil smiled and uh, yelled back at him. Simple. Hang out with rich people. <laughs> That's right. Hang out with rich people who become inundated and saturated with their successful mindsets and their successful philosophies. Neil Patel says, if you want to get rich, just hang out with rich people. 
What a bunch of baloney that is. Neil Patel is in the right stadium, but he's sitting in the wrong seat. Because you just can't go out tomorrow and start hanging out with rich people. You know, in order to hang out with rich people, you got to be a member of their country club, member of their stock club, or live in their affluent neighborhood. You don't have to hang out with rich people, ladies and gentlemen. That's what I'm trying to tell you. Go to Barnes & Noble. Go to Borders. Dial up Amazon. And for 20 bucks, give or take a few, you can buy yourself a rich friend. <laughs> and he or she will share their successful mindsets and successful philosophies with you. You want to go from where you are tonight to where you want to go, always be reading books and listening to CDs on achieving great success, often by successful men and women. And number three, carry around with you at all times a large container of, oh, yes, I can. In the entire history of cross country and distance running, nobody has ever broken the four mile, or had ever broken the four minute mile. They said it couldn't be done. They even used that other <coughs> word, impossible. However, in 1954, carrying a large container of, oh, yes, I can, Roger Bannister broke the four-minute mile. Only one month later, John Landy of Australia broke the four-minute mile, and within two years, 27 other runners had done it. Now, what happened? Did the runners start running more miles as part of their workout regimen? No. Roger Bannister changed the prevailing thought from, it's impossible, to, oh, yes, I can. Oh, yes, I can. Oh, yes, I can. Say it to yourself every day, over and over again. It works. It's effective. Besides, it feels good to say it. Here, let me show you. I'm going to count to three, and I want everybody in this room to shout out, oh, yes, I can. One, two, three. Oh, yes, I can. Doesn't that feel good? Doesn't that feel good? The fact of the matter is, ladies and gentlemen, oh, yes, you can. I know you can do it, and Jesse Rittenhouse says you can do it. And old Jesse wouldn't lie about a thing like that. This contest here.